they want to be God. They want to rule the planet. Just as other thought I had. If the last soul came to the Earth 2012 and God wanted all the souls present, maybe there were some souls that were kept from doing any harm, then released so that all souls will be present for the last seven years. before God says hello and and this you know I am sticking my neck out here because these spirits aren't going to be too happy with me shit and tobacco Oh yeah, we've got one here. None for the morning now. Or maybe we'll scrape one out. <laughs> sad. Very sad. But look, I could do worse, okay? So don't beat yourself up, you know. There are, there are some injuries we have that stem so far back through the generations that um, to get to the core of everything takes a little takes a little while takes a little working out and especially learning to feel that's definitely the path that you need to take so I say the same to these dark spirits who want everything to go bad because they're in a bad place they want other people to be there it's it's completely natural of course what's unfortunate is that they can't see their their own redemption their own path and it is through feeling but they're so afraid of feeling um, and you know many of them will be afraid that you know there's just too much that they've that they've just done too much they couldn't possibly go through it all <clears throat> you know, and even we can all get days like that, but you know, the um, the motivation should be well, stop doing things which are making it even worse. Because God not God isn't going to leave anybody behind. So eventually. You're going to have to start. And I think, you know, it's probably true that the worst is over the moment you begin to start. So, I guess, you know, I'm making myself a target. But, um, Yeah. So the, these uh, that they want to be God. They've looked at the what God's done, and it seems to be a disagreement right near the start. Now, if Adam and Eve is an analogy of the the real first two human beings and not what um, the second part of Genesis kind of refers to as um, making the woman out of the rib of man and 
you know, already once you've even got that far into the Bible, there's already contradictions. Men and women are equal. <laughs> it's, it's as simple as that. We're just two halves of a whole, but male qualities, female qualities, they are different. They are different. Why we're made like that? Hmm, that's an interesting question. I think one for another video. The predictions around September 2015. The beginning of trickery. You're going to be tricked into believing in the false Jesus, I guess, because the other thing they do, they they bring in this Christ. They talk about the Holy Spirit. Now, if you do what one of these spirits wants, you're going to feel some love. You're going to feel, like, protected. Do what they don't want, and you're going to feel the opposite. You know, maybe sometimes it's why I get so a bit sketchy in my videos is because I've got I've got spirits trying to put me off. But I'm becoming more sensitive to the feelings. So I'm um I'm becoming more accurate. And you know God, when you feel God, wow, it's just, awesome doesn't, doesn't do it, you know, awesome isn't a strong enough word. And many people have felt God, and they, then they are really, I know, but it's often easy to mix it. To mix it with the Bible or to mix it with other visions you've had or other thoughts. You know, it's possible to do that. It depends on how much you felt. And that you should be feeling more and more. So that you get to understand. Now, knowing that God is all loving is, is a very good clue, usually. Because any sort of unloving feeling isn't going to be coming from God. And God, if you go away from God's path, all God will do is just leave you alone. It's the worst God will do, is leave you alone for a few minutes. <laughs> but still loving you, she is. all the time as you, a parent would love a child or just because God's got 50 million, 50 billion children sorry I was just um, you know, I'm having to constantly weigh up things I've felt with things I see, with thoughts I have, things that happen. Now, the things that happen, well, I've got this new job about something which has happened. The spark of it came was when I was several months ago lying in the bath thinking there's no such thing as insanity. Not if you know the cause. Not if you understand it. Nobody's insane. 
But you can think you're insane. Which you could argue is insane. What does insane mean? Well, let's just say... The brain, the mind... The brain is just an instrument to control the physical body. The mind is spiritual. The mind is in the spirit body. The soul dominates all. The soul can have sitting in it the wrong belief system. And I guess you could have such a fucked up belief system in your soul that would deem you pretty much insane. Now you could argue that most people are insane. And my experiences with my new job supporting people with learning disabilities it clarified something to me and that is that these people are of course no less than anybody else in fact they're probably more loving than most people but that they may well have some fucked up belief systems in their soul. Which causes them to... to act differently. If it happened when they were young, or in the womb, quite possibly could have caused some deformities in the growing stages but they would be fixable if the soul was fixed possibly not sure take for example epilepsy now I don't know and I haven't really had enough contact with anyone with ep epilepsy to say anything concrete about epilepsy but did hear that, you know, everything went white. Well, I asked, did everything go white? Did everything sort of go bright? And he said, yeah. And I said, were you quite happy at the time? And he said, yeah. And to me, it's quite possible that he was beginning to feel God. But the belief system in him made made that scary fear and I've experienced that myself and it was scary and I, my heart began beating so fast that I thought I might have a heart attack um, but once I had heard this divine truth thought about these new ideas of God and what we are and, and compared them to what I was believing at the time and took what I was believing at the time and compared it to that. And let's take that away. Let's see how this feels. feels good, this feels, this feels right. Then, f getting to those points where I'm feeling God, and not being scared, being able to feel it without fear, and, yeah, my heart, there was a, you know, it was a gradual thing, but yeah, 
my heart could take it. It wasn't an issue. And I've still got a way to go. But it feels good to be on the right path. It feels very good. It doesn't feel great to see so many not on the right path, but every now and then on YouTube you see someone who's on the same path. They might be further along it. They might be further behind. But they're on the path. Slowly but surely the the errors that went before will be removed. And that's why it's getting better. It is getting better. But these spirits and the, the people that they're in control of are doing some sort of deceit, some sort of trickery. And it well might have been well long planned. I do remember before this fallen angel stuff and they were having some influence even before they could get out. I don't know, but I know their spirits. I don't know the full history. But their spirits. And I'm looking forward to when God comes and says hello to everyone. Because all the spirits in the spirit world will see. And all the spirits who are earthbound will see. And all the humans are still alive will see. And absolutely everyone will be there. The whole family. At least in this earth area. Because there may be another planet with humans on it too. Maybe they'll get it at the same time. But what's going to come first is the trickery. So don't fall for the trickery. Don't believe what they're telling you. I don't think Obama is the Antichrist. Jesus is our brother. Jesus isn't God. Jesus was a man. Part of God's plan. God's plan was Jesus. I believe that. He, she intervened as he she's always creating always intervening but intervened with a, a human without it breaking the free will Jesus was healed of all these soul injuries and it's just amaz it's an amazing it's an amazing story healed of these injuries at birth so that he grew up knowing god and by the time he was late 20s he'd been through a lot of shit healed himself he'd lived in a cave for a load of years Totally, totally on his own. And he was there with God. Got there with God. And then he preached. And obviously, you know, the words we've got remaining in the Bible today. If you look at what Jesus said, it's all pretty awesome. Um, not everything he did was true. You know, a lot of it was 
a lot of it seems to be going soft on the Romans because the Romans at the time were absolute arses. So, you know, you can't just go by the Bible, but so he obviously had an effect on the world, it changed the world. So his presence must have been amazing. And then he dies, and then he carries on his work in the spirit world, helping people in the spirit world. And he ascended new heights in the spirit world. There are layers of love. How loving you are determines on how high you can be in the spirit world. And Jesus spent 2,000 years creating new heights of love, getting closer to God each time. Until he and his soulmate got to a stage where they discarded the spiritual body and their soul reconnected as one individual child of God. And as Jesus had been progressing, he'd had others that were coming up behind him too. And um, they then decided out of love to reincarnate, to come back to level one after achieving what they'd achieved. And at that point could have really gone on to learn about God and really become and really grow in love. They, out of love for, for all their brothers and sisters, came back square one again. Although their souls must grow and be strong. They, they had to take on the damages again from the genealogy of humans. It's all passed on in the genes. Some of the damage. The damage. And, but, amazingly, Jesus worked it out. He, he progressed in this life. He was born in 1962. And he, um, about the age of 34, he had this realization of everything that had happened, what he'd done. And um, subsequently found some of the others that had come with him, seven pairs, and found his soulmate and has been teaching this truth to people all over the world, mostly in Australia, but England, Sweden, America, Greece, other places, and, um, and obviously being on YouTube, is that where I got it, and it's changed, it's changed my life, I'm so happy. You know, when I was first hearing it and I first heard about a soulmate and I got to the point where I, and I felt that, I felt it. I've always believed that, I heard this thing, information just passes you by, but the truth hits you. The magic flows through you, which now I know is feeling. <laughs> it's magic because it's so powerful effect your soul has on everything around you and everyone around you and if you make little improvements to your soul which are permanent so feel some emotion and repair a bit of yourself permanent for forever if you like and you also see the effect it has on has on your world It's good for the people you love, it's good for your family, it's good for your children. It's amazing for your children if you if you heal some of your soul because they they have the ability to do it so much better and they will then quickly do it too 
if you, and that damage was done by you to your child. Likewise, forgive your parents for what they unknowingly did to you. And this is the way forward. This is where we go, humans. This is the way. And then you've got to include God in it, but make sure it's the right God. Make sure it's not this whatever, thinking that they're God, thinking that they would do a better job as God, thinking that they know best. It's not them. And don't think you're God either. Which is, I, I got into that belief that we're all God. <clears throat> it was just kind of, you know, seemed to make logical sense over other things, but because you've got so many warped beliefs, it seems to fit in easy. It fits in with the consensus of society and scientists and everything else, so you kind of quite easily go with it. But there is a God, a mother and father, our mummy and daddy, that love us very much. And our physical mum and daddy are actually our brother and sister. And so is Jesus and so is Satan if he even exists. And um, so it's going to be an interesting uh, time, but I'm sure I'll make another video soon. Okay, that'll do. Ciao.